coming out of Yavapai County. The 10 year old boy burned and bruised has died. We told you last week when Christian Pearson was found not breathing at a home in Chino Valley. Now police went to talk to anyone who attended a yard sale at the home the day that this happened. Police will recommend murder charges against Daniel Terry and Juliana Moreno. They're accused of tying that boy up so he couldn't protect himself from that abuse. And just as horrific, a 10 year old girl locked in a footlocker as punishment for taking a popsicle left there all night to die. We're talking about the case of Amy Deal. This sparked outrage across the entire state six years ago. Still does today, really. And at this very moment, the path to justice begins. That trial finally getting underway for Amy's cousin, Samantha Allen. Jurors were given instructions just minutes ago, and now it's on to opening statements. When the tragedy happened, the family told police it was all a game of hide and seek, but investigators call it child abuse and murder. Amy's grandmother and an aunt took guilty pleas on lesser charges. Prosecutors are now seeking the death penalty for Allen. Her husband, John Allen, also charged and behind bars. His trial is expected to start in August. And in another Valley courtroom, the director of a Phoenix daycare accused of covering up abuse of a toddler just sat before a judge. Lily Adams is the second person in trouble. Investigators say brighter angels sent out letters with their own fake version of what happened. The state says the daycare is still allowed to operate because no child or no children are in quote immediate jeopardy. Well, we are on wildfire watch for you this morning with the first dose of relief coming to people in Globe. The Pinal fire is nearly contained. Crews do expect to get it wrapped up by Thursday. That fire started more than a month ago by a lightning strike. And the rest of the state in dire need of relief. There are so many fires here at some of the larger ones can actually be seen from space. The National Weather Service tweeted out this picture this morning. The closest fire to the valley is near Black Canyon City. Crews say that the challenge with the T fire is that it's burning and really hard to reach terrain and they're depending on air tankers to keep that fire under control. So far that fire has burned about 1200 acres and the boundary fire near Flagstaff showing no signs of slowing down after 12 days and in five hours there is a meeting planned to smoke and flames keep us 180 closed this is cutting off the main route between flagstaff and the grand canyon so officials now say that highway will stay closed until further notice they're set to reevaluate on sunday so your best detour is to take i-40 and state route 64 to get around as for the fire it's now burned nearly 5400 acres of course weather always playing the most crucial role right now for those crews on the front lines yeah iris has been tracking today's cooler temperatures but also the strong winds that could really make this worse, Iris. Yeah, and we've got wind advisories posted for northern and northeast Arizona because of these strong winds that are already developing across our state. This area under a wind advisory that does include spots like Flagstaff and these winds are going to create that high wildfire danger, make it harder even for crews that are already battling those fires burning in our state. We've got red flag warnings posted along the rim and that goes all the way up into northeast Arizona, the Four Corners region, even into New Mexico as we got some as we've got Got some very dry air moving in and again the dry air plus the strong winds all leading to that high fire danger. Look at the winds right now. These are sustained winds already upwards of 30 miles an hour in Flagstaff and Winslow gusts at 45 miles an hour in Flagstaff. So a windy morning up there and those alerts in effect here as we go through this evening gusts will peak close to 50 miles an hour before we start to see those winds tapering off and here in the valley just some breezes going into this afternoon. Cooler temperatures, though, a high of only 94 degrees today. I'll show you how long before we're back in the triple digits. Okay, so you're not going to be hearing that sound today. Minutes ago, Luke Air Force Base confirmed F-35 jets will remain grounded. It was like that all weekend because pilots, they have problems getting oxygen in the air. Apparently, that happened five different times. No date yet for flights to resume. Restricting who flies into the country. There is a major deadline today on the future of any travel ban. Yeah, you'll, rem you'll remember the first one was only in effect about a week and then revised. Uh, the revised ban got stuck, uh, struck down before it even started. So now it would be up to the high court, uh, high court and ABC 15's Katie Connor <laughs> reports. 
time is ticking for those who are challenging the president's travel ban. Last week, the Justice Department filed a petition asking the Supreme Court to let the president's travel ban go into effect. It would suspend new visas for visitors from six predominantly Muslim nations. It would also block refugees for at least four months. Lower courts almost immediately blocked it. We're going to fight this terrible ruling. We're going to take our case as far as it needs to go, including all the way up to the Supreme Court. The president says the ban is in the interest of national security, most recently citing last week's terror attacks in London to support why he believes it's so important for our security. And five justices need to vote yes for that ban to go into effect. An appeals court in Seattle already blocked it within just the last hour. Yeah, the state of Hawaii also asking the Supreme Court this morning to keep the ban on hold. Meantime, for those wanting to fly out of Flagstaff, the airport is closed for runway repairs and it's going to stay that way for several more days, canceling commuter flights to the high country. A paving should wrap up one week from today. It's the first time that we're really working in the city on health issues. Well, is your zip code a hot zone? The natural way one group hopes to keep Valley neighborhoods cool. And changing the game of football with some high-tech tackling. See how Arizona is leading that charge. And earlier, uh, just a few minutes ago, our own Katie Connor told you there's talk of a proposed laptop ban on all international flights in and out of the U.S. Uh, to guard against terror attacks. So in our live poll, we want to know, would you support a ban, yes or no? Just hop onto abc15.com slash poll to sound off. the right thing. Oh yeah, it's going viral. Right this minute, America's daily viral video show. Weekdays at 2 on ABC 15. Iris is our morning weather geek. She's always been amazed by the power of Mother Nature, especially our summer monsoon storms. She grew up in the valley, Creighton Elementary, Camelback High School. The first in her family to graduate college. Earning a full scholarship to ASU. As a team, we are all really close. Dan even officiated her wedding. Iris has experience forecasting all kinds of weather. From tornadoes, blizzards, she has covered it all. And it's that experience that helps bring you the most accurate forecast. Do you have the right tools to meet your financial goals? Desert Schools is teaming up with ABC 15 to bring you the financial fitness zone. Go to abc15.com slash finance. You'll find practical information and smart ideas to help keep you on track. Desert Schools, we're here for you. We are CenturyLink. We believe in the power of the digital world. The power to connect small towns, big cities, and even bigger dreams. And that's what drives us every day. CenturyLink. Chris is a serious news junkie. We even call him the historian of breaking news. He comes from a football family. His dad, his brothers played from college to the NFL. His football coach in Alabama even suggested a career in journalism. He likes to ask a lot of questions. He's a proud dad of three boys. Family is always first. But his job is a close second, always up on what's happening. With Christopher on our team, you're going to get breaking news first and get it right the first time. Triple digit threat in full force. You know, this time of year, some parts of the valley are hot spots for sending people to the hospital because of the heat. ABC 15's John Genovese shares the most sweltering neighborhoods and how a group of planners hope to bring some relief. The sun pouring down as this trio pours cement. So hot. Day after day, they tell me they're craving cover. A lot of big trees like that one, or, you know, something shady. Now there's an effort to give Valley Hotspots some relief. And we're working on reducing heat in the city through the power of nature. I love Ironwood especially. And Maggie Messerschmidt is Urban Conservation Program Manager for the Nature Conservancy. Using $120,000 in grant money, they want to use vegetation to add shade to at least three Valley neighborhoods. If we can identify areas where people are more likely to be affected or, or where illnesses are more likely to be exacerbated by heat, then we know that those are areas where we 
continue to get to work. In a study posted by the National Institutes of Health, this map shows the most vulnerable areas for heat illness. In Central and South Phoenix, these zip codes are among the worst. Up in Deer Valley, 85024 and 85027 aren't so good either. It's the first time that we're really working in the city on health issues. Using plants and trees to solve a problem? These guys say yes, please. We need more on that. A lot more. John Genovese, ABC 15, Arizona. Well, the Nature Conservancy hopes to select those three neighborhoods by the end of the week. And you can actually learn more about what they're doing by going to our website, abc15.com. Well, some good news in the weather department. I'm tracking a break from the triple digits. I'll show you how long it lasts, and we'll talk about winds across the state. And summer driving, it's not bad when you're in the car, but what happens when you get out? Well, that could bring on thieves, the number one way to prevent a carjacking. The Badger Herald. He is constantly reading. We call him our walking encyclopedia. So when it comes to news, he's the kind of guy you want on your team every day. Do you have the right tools to meet your financial goals? Desert Schools is teaming up with ABC 15 to bring you the financial fitness zone. Go to abc15.com slash finance. You'll find practical information and smart ideas to help keep you on track. Desert Schools, we're here for you. Dan moved to Arizona when he was just 11 years old. He was all about the Wild West, and he's still telling stories. He's a history buff. You can ask him anything. He studies everything. He is a fact finder. Husband to Kendra and dad of five kids. He is all about faith and family. We genuinely love to hang out with them. We are like a family that just happens to work with each other. Dan makes Arizona mornings a little brighter. better pray. Crime Watch Daily, weekdays at 3 on ABC 15. You have made ABC 15 News at 10 the number one late news in the Valley. Thank you, Arizona, for making ABC 15 the most watched newscast at 10. ABC 15, taking action. We are CenturyLink. We believe in the power of the digital world, the power to connect small towns, big cities, and even bigger dreams. And that's what drives us every day. CenturyLink. Amber was born and raised right here in the Valley. She played the horn in the Salvation Army band. Stephen, SJ, and Sadie, they all keep her really busy. Amber is a true weather geek. Make that a weather nerd. She graduated from the U of A with a degree in atmospheric science and then, just for fun, minored in math. She knows weather. She's got the street cred and the smarts. And that's how we get the most accurate forecast every day. Viral. Okay, so you've got the bags packed and you're counting down to hit the road for that summer vacation. But is your car ready? We are talking about tires this morning and a lot of do's and don'ts. So we want to bust a few of those myths to keep you safe. Okay, so first you want to check your tire on a regular basis. The tire pressure instead of just relying on that monitor. It doesn't tell you until the tires are about 25% down, which is already unsafe. Now the second thing, your back tires are actually more important than your front tires. You want to replace those so you don't skid. And lastly, over inflating your tires isn't going to burst them. You'd see exploding tires every day if that was the case. Well, an even bigger safety alert for you this summer, even if you're not planning a road trip. Uh, we know it's hot out there, but leaving your car running just invites criminals to jump behind the wheels. So we've got Dr. Cindy Scott here with us, a former Phoenix detective. You now teach at NAU. Yes. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And this was interesting. I didn't realize that as the temperatures go up, you guys actually see a spike in the number of stolen vehicles and carjackings as well. I, absolutely. And I'm surprised we haven't heard about it recently, yeah. but we will we'll hear about it more over the summer. Everyone leaves their cars running, even if they just go into the store for a couple minutes. 
and it's a magnet for criminals. All they see is the car running, they look in the driver's seat, nobody's there, and they break the window and they're gone in a matter of seconds. Yeah, and I know a lot of people tend to do that to keep pets cool. You know, maybe you're just running in because you have a child and you don't want to leave them in the hot yes. car, but it sounds like what you're saying, it's it's not worth it because you're basically inviting criminals and making you it are. easy for them. You know, and I'm a parent too. I mean, I have three kids and trust me, the last yeah. thing I want to do is to drag all these kids into the car. Right. But unfortunately, we will hear cases where the kids are left in the car, someone breaks into the car, they don't know the kids are there. It's not a person crime, it's, right. it's a property crime. All they want is the car, but unfortunately, they, they, they take off with your car and your kids, mm -hmm. and we hear these horrific cases of you know people dumping the kids and so forth. See, so you, uh, you can't do it. And also, if you have some of that kind of anti-theft technology on your car, that necessarily won't guard against this if it's running, is that right? Right, exactly. They're, it, all they're doing is they're breaking into the car and they're just not hot wiring the car, they're just stealing it automatically. Yeah. So um, some of that stuff will work after the car is going, like if you have low jack and so forth, yes. you can give that information to the police so they can help track your car, or there's a cell phone in your car, again, you can track it. But again, it doesn't stop the initial crime, which is horrific. It is one of the scariest things, obviously, for parents. Yes. And it's literally is a matter of seconds. So uh, one thing that you can do to try to mitigate it a little bit, yeah. again, it is, you're not going to prevent it. If your car's running, it's a magnet for criminal activity. Right. But like, I have a 15-year-old son who looks 18, so, you know, if you, if I have to go in, I'll put him in the driver's seat so it doesn't look like anybody is, you know, it's unoccupied. Yes. A husband and wife, if, you know, some person goes in, if the driver's seat is empty, it's a magnet for criminal activity. Put somebody in the driver's seat if the car is going to stay running. So those are some ways you can try to prevent this from happening. It, it's mitigating. It's not going to prevent anytime your okay. car is running, you're sitting there. As it's running. That's yes. Right. You said, if, yeah. if, if basically, you're, you're sitting at a, at, a, at a stationary place, and if you have a criminal that wants a car, you know, if they have a weapon or something, you know, they're going to, you know, jump in the car. So right. it, you have to be really cautious. Be alert if you're sitting in a, you know, a parking lot or so forth with the car running. Yeah. So like you said, kind of lock your doors, try to mitigate it uh, that way. Um, yes. Now, what if you, God forbid, happen to be in the car when yes. a thief attempts to carjack? I mean, it, that's a whole other level. It is. Again, Again, this is usually a property crime. It's not a person crime. Okay. So give them the property. If it is just you in the car and it happens, get out of the car immediately. Mm -hmm. You never want to go to a secondary location with this person, and definitely not an isolated place. If you happen to be sitting in the driver's seat, someone gets into the car, your car's running, okay, then you want to drive to a populated place, drive to a lighted place, drive to a circle, okay, throw the keys, anything. You never want to go to an isolated place with this person, ever. And, and I'd imagine, you know, as soon as something like that were to happen, you got to get on the phone, you got to call 911 one one report oh, this immediately. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, take a picture of your of your license plate. Mm -hmm. So you have that information available for the police department. Take a picture of your car. These are things that can really cut down the time that it takes the police officers to find your car. All right, that's some great advice. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. We appreciate it. And just more things to think about, you know, as those temperatures go up, Iris and Justin. All right, thanks. Iris, a beautiful Monday morning. We are starting the week out just right. You know what? Not a bad way to start Monday, but as Danielle was just talking about, the heat is going to be back soon, so we got to mm. enjoy this, Justin, okay. before it gets hotter. Now, right now, looking very nice outside as we look at those clear skies across the valley. I did want to take you up north, though, first because I wanted to show you those trees waving in the wind as we look live with our Cliffcast Casino camera. I-17 there in the distance, but in the foreground, you see that tree? Yeah, it's going as those winds have been kicking up all morning across northern Arizona. I showed you these a little earlier. Sustained winds. So we're talking constant wind speeds near 30 to 35 miles an hour right along I-40. And these winds are coming in out of the south south southwest. So that means some strong crosswinds along I-40. Maybe you're traveling from Flagstaff to New Mexico this morning. That is going to be an issue for your drive. And those wind gusts are even stronger. We're talking gusts already near 45 miles an hour in both Flagstaff and at the Grand Canyon. Gusts of 41 miles an hour in Winslow and Sholo also getting those very strong winds. Wind gusts. So as we go into this afternoon, this area in northeast Arizona will be where we continue to feel these very strong winds. And that is why those areas are under wind advisories. So this includes the entire Magian Rim up into northeast Arizona and that Four Corners region. And there's that high wildfire threat. Already we've got some fires burning up there. And so, of course, that's going to make fighting those fires even more difficult. But fires can get started very easily under these conditions. So that's why those red flag warnings are posted so that you use extra caution today. Avoid burning outdoors, things of that nature. Now, gusts again will peak between 45 and 50 miles an hour going into this afternoon in spots across northern and northeast Arizona where those alerts are posted. Here in the valley, we're going to get some breezes, but our breezes this afternoon max out near 20 to 25 miles an hour. At least those wind gusts do, so they're not going to be as strong here in the valley.
Now these winds are kicking up as we are tracking a cold front that is currently moving into our state. That cold front will move across by tonight. Those winds back off tomorrow. We'll have some lighter winds, but we've got some cooler air moving in behind this disturbance, and that is why today is shaping up to be a much cooler day. Temperatures right now only in the 80s and we're talking low to mid 80s right now. Remember last week at this time we were already approaching the triple digits. Not the case today. We're at 83 in Mesa, 83 in Deer Valley and yep, Wickenburg, you're still in the 70s at this hour. We are at 85 in Levine, a little warmer in Goodyear already approaching that 90 degree mark, but still doing pretty good here at this hour. And maybe you're going to be heading out to lunch soon. Well, Enjoy maybe lunch outside. Temperatures are going to be in the 80s through your lunch break before we start to warm into the 90s, but we'll top out in the 90s today. So we should hit 91 by 2 o'clock, warm to 94 degrees for a high today, and that'll put us nearly 10 degrees below the average for this time of year. 30 year average is 103. So today, with that cold front pushing through, we're going to feel cooler temperatures. A high of 92 in Mesa and in Apache Junction, 93 in Glendale, and we'll top out at 92 today in surprise with. 90 degrees in Anthem. As you look at temperatures across the state, no triple digits anywhere in sight, even out west a little bit cooler with upper 80s for highs, low 90s down in Yuma. Now, this cooler weather is not going to stick around for too long. I'll show you when the triple digits are back and we've got some dangerously hot temperatures heading our way by the weekend. I'll show you just how high that temperature is going to go. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Iris. Workers wanted in the Valley, and if you need a job, you need to polish up that resume. Discover is hiring for 200 positions from customer service to collections and fraud. If you've got the stuff to be a 911 operator, only 10 days left to apply. The city of Mesa accepting applications until June the 22nd. The starting salary there, $36,000. And for even more positions, the Scottsdale Career Fair, that is Wednesday with 1,300 jobs up for grabs. It runs from 11 until 2 at the Doubletree Resort Hilton Paradise Valley. Be ready to interview on the spot. A Valley girl on a mission to see the world until she can't see anymore. It's a bucket list with a twist. And Father's Day right around the corner. And to celebrate, we are giving away prizes for the dad in your life. For official rules and to enter our Father's Day giveaway, just head to abc15.com slash dad. Good luck. He's about three boys. Family is always first. But his job is a close second, always up on what's happening. With Christopher on our team, you're going to get breaking news first and get it right the first time. Katie is our hometown girl. Went to Saguaro High, proud ASU Sun Devil. Little known fact, Katie started right here at ABC 15 as an intern. On a kid's show. Can you imagine a world without movies? She's a mom with a devoted dad and two great kids. You're not going to find anybody who cares more about the people in the stories that we tell. Katie knows Arizona, and she brings it every day. You could easily say Danielle is everything Arizona. Just like me, she grew up in the Valley. Went to Chaparral, was on the swim and softball teams. Danielle is a new mom at home, and she's really our work mom. She truly brings our morning team together. And she bakes a mean batch of cake batter cookies. She loves Arizona because this is home. She is kind, she is good hearted. You know you can trust her, you know you can count on her, and she's just an all around good person. Danielle makes Arizona mornings a lot brighter. Unexpected is happening now. Our weather is changing now. ABC 15 News is investigating now. See all of it captured on the Now Arizona. Weekdays at 4 on ABC 15. Steve is serious. Bucket list for her vision. It went viral last year. You may remember hearing the story of six year old Kaylee, the Peoria girl. She has a rare eye disease, meaning it's a matter of when 
not if she goes blind. So her mother has created a sightseeing bucket list. It'll help Kaylee keep those memories once her vision fades. And ABC 15's Megan Thompson found out which adventure is up next. This is Kaylee. <laughs> And she's the cheerleader to four eyes everywhere. Don't give up with ever, anything, anything, anything. Her mom Katrina says Kaylee always looks out for others. Something made pretty clear during a trip to the doctor's office. And I was getting some blood drawn. And she patted me on the leg and she says, Shh, mama, it's okay, it's just a poke. Because of that, Katrina says, she hopes to be like her own daughter when she grows up. Out of all the things that she goes through in her life, on the grand scheme of things, everything in life is just a poke. But the pokes have meant a lot of surgeries for Kaylee, diagnosed at just 18 months old with a slew of unpronounceable diseases that were hidden behind those shining eyes. I have always had this fear that um, Kaylee was going to live in the dark. So the memories will be her light. Her mother creating this GoFundMe page to take Kaylee places she can keep in her mind. And the adventure's already underway. From performing on stage... These are slippers from the Phoenix Ballet when we went to the Nutcracker. And sitting courtside with the home team. Booker signed her jersey. To getting a glimpse of the Golden Gate Bridge. But there are still a lot of check marks left on that bucket list, one her mother says she'll keep adding to. The sky is kind of the limit with her. There's nothing that she wouldn't try, let's just say like that. Reporting in Peoria. Yay. Megan Thompson, ABC 15, Arizona. Is she not one of the sweetest little girls she you have ever so seen? so cute. My goodness. If you want to help Kaylee keep checking those items off her list, we have posted that link to the GoFundMe on our website. All right, so the Arizona Humane Society hoping you can help this little girl out. Six-year-old Kelly has been at the shelter for more than a year, just waiting for a temporary foster home while her owner is deployed overseas. So she needs that place to stay until next year. So if you're interested, we've also put that information on our website at abc15.com. Okay, so it is a popular spot to keep cool in the summer, but taking a dip at the lake could put your life in danger from something you can't even see. The new warning. Viral videos right this minute. What is that? It's a wild thing. It's a weird thing. A fail thing. A crazy thing. Oh! A light up the internet thing. It's just fantastic. It's the right thing. Oh yeah, it's going viral. Right this minute, America's daily viral video show. Weekdays at 2 on ABC 15. Iris is our morning weather geek. She's always been amazed by the power of Mother Nature, especially our summer monsoon storms. She grew up in the Valley, Creighton Elementary, Camelback High School. The first in her family to graduate college. Earning a full scholarship to ASU. As a team, we are all really close. Dan even officiated her wedding. Iris has experience forecasting all kinds of weather. From tornadoes, blizzards, she has covered it all. And it's that experience that helps bring you the most accurate forecast. Do you have the right tools to meet your financial goals? Desert Schools is teaming up with ABC 15 to bring you the financial fitness zone. Go to abc15.com slash finance. You'll find practical information and smart ideas to help keep you on track. Desert Schools, we're here for you. We are CenturyLink. We believe in the power of the digital world. The power to connect small towns, big cities, and even bigger dreams. And that's what drives us every day. CenturyLink. Chris is a serious news junkie. We even call him the historian of...